Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we are gonna paint this super awesome sea monster painting. And while I was painting this, I realized that I didn't have a title for the video, and I wanted it to have an interesting title. So I put it out on my Facebook page asking for suggestions, and Stephanie Stout came up with the winning suggestion of Squishy's Embrace. I got dozens of name suggestions, and they were all great ones. But Squishy's Embrace kind of, it kind of made me laugh. It was a little bit gross, it was a little bit playful. It was exactly what I was looking for. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials, and let's get started. For today's painting, we're gonna use the following colors. Thalo Green, Mars Black, Burnt Umber, and Titanium White. We're also gonna use the following brushes. A one inch flat brush, a fat round natural hair bristle brush, if you don't have one of these, you can use your one inch flat brush. An angle brush, this one is 5 eighths of an inch or a number 10. And a small round brush, I don't know what size this is, it's an old brush so that part is worn off, but it's just a very small round brush. You're also going to need some masking tape, a cup about the size that you want your moon to be, and a pencil. To start off, we're going to paint this entire background with our phthalo green. So I'm going to take my one inch flat brush, wet it in the jar, and just wipe off the excess on the edge. Now this doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't have to worry about brush directionality. We're just going to load up with a bunch of paint and just cover it. All right, so there's our colored ground. We're gonna let this dry, and when we come back, we'll start painting in the water and sky. So we talked before about the rule of thirds. So remember breaking the canvas up like this. So there's one third, and there's another third. But putting things of interest on those lines makes your painting more dynamic and keeps the viewer looking around. So I'm gonna put my horizon on this top one third line. So I'm gonna use some tape, and I'm gonna be painting at the bottom edge here. So wherever this bottom edge of tape is, that's where I want my horizon. So I'm gonna put it right about, right about there. Make sure you press it down good here so the paint doesn't seep up underneath it. And we're gonna start painting at the bottom here. Now to make this look like nice, deep, dark water, I'm gonna start with some brown in my green here and then slowly work up until I've got a super, super light mixture of white and green up here. So I've got my round natural bristle brush and I'm using it dry. But again, if you don't have one of these, you can certainly use the flat brush. I just like to use this one for here because I feel like it gives me a much smoother blend with a lot less effort. So I'm gonna load up with brown quite a bit, a little bit of green, and just a hint of white. Now I don't want to use enough white that I make this lighter, I'm just using it to get a consistent color throughout and because the white will help these colors be a little less transparent. So the brush stroke I'm going to do is just back and forth like this, I'm going to kind of arc it so that the dark color comes up higher on the sides a little. And I'm using very light pressure, especially where I'm blending. And notice you can see the green through the brown there. And that's exactly why we painted that first layer of green is so that we have that base color, and then we don't have to work so hard to get these colors to cover. And when that green glows through, 
It's just gonna add another layer of dimension to the water to make it seem really deep. So I'm using very light pressure there just to smooth everything out. Now I'm not gonna pick up any more brown. I've got still quite a bit of brown on here. I'm just gonna get green and maybe just a little bit more white than before. I'm gonna start just above where I left off. Slowly work down into it and use super light pressure, almost dusting over top of that brown part to get a blend. Press a little bit harder here where I wanna lay down more color. I feel like that doesn't have enough green in it, so I'm just gonna put a little more in there. There we go. More green. A little bit more white. Oh, not quite that much. There we go. And I'm still arcing it up on the sides. These colors don't have to be perfectly blended. In fact, I think if you have little bits of light and dark in there, it helps to give the illusion of water. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a darker spot right here. And then maybe just a little bit lighter over here. The variation really makes the water dynamic and interesting. So long as you have a general fade from darker to lighter, that's really all that matters. So that time I just got a little bit of green. I'm gonna start moving into quite a bit lighter. I had to stop for a second, so this part's drying a bit, so it's not really blending. If that happens, just get a bit of the color you're trying to blend into, and then use light pressure and that will help. Much better. So that time, just a little bit of green, more white, because I really want this top part to be quite light. Just white this time for this top all the way up to the tape. Now these corners, I want just a little bit darker, so I'm gonna grab a bit of green and a bit of brown and start feathering that in there. Really, really light pressure there. Remember, we use super light pressure to blend and we push harder to lay paint down. All right, I think I like that. Now before this paint dries, you wanna peel the tape off. If you let the paint dry completely and then try and peel the tape off, the tape will shred and be stuck down to your canvas and then it'll take you 15 minutes to peel it all off. And I should know because that's what I did before. So learn from my mistakes, peel the, paint, the tape off when the paint's wet. Now we're gonna paint our sky. And the reason I tilted my canvas on its side is because I find that when I wanna draw a straight line, it's easier for me to draw it straight up and down than it is side to side. And the reason for that is when you go from side to side, your arm naturally has a tendency to droop down one side. So then it ends up being higher on one side and lower on the other. But when you do it straight up and down, you can put your hand on the canvas and just like gravity, move your arm straight down. So that's what I'm doing here. 
So I've got my angle brush and I just wet it in the jar and wiped it off on the edge. And I'm gonna load up with some white. And then I'm just gonna grab a tiny hint of green and a tiny hint of brown. I want this to be pretty light. Maybe just slightly lighter than the lightest part of the water here. All right, so I'm gonna remember the tip of the brush drags, so it's pointing up. My hand is on my canvas, and I'm gonna place the edge right there and just let gravity bring my arm down slowly. Ooh, my canvas is a little baggy there, so it gave me a bump. If you are not comfortable doing that, it's okay, just wait for the water to dry completely and then put another piece of tape on it and paint the sky in against the tape like we did the water. All right, now I want my sky to be really dynamic and kind of streaky and it's also gonna fade from lighter to darker. I'm not gonna go quite this dark, but darker. So all I'm gonna do is load up with white Grab a snap of green and a snap of brown and just let this be really streaky. I think when you have streaks in your sky, then it kind of looks like clouds and I like that. So I'm just gonna be kind of random with this. If you get a spot that's too much of one color or another, just put something else over top of it. Like I feel like that's way too much brown. So I'm gonna grab some white and a little bit of green. And now it's not too brown. If you feel like the paint is dragging too much and it's kind of sticking where you put it, then your brush is probably just a little too dry. So just keep a little extra drop of water on the end of your brush. You can use your flat brush here, the one inch flat brush. I'm using this one because the softer bristles don't push the paint around quite as much, so it leaves some of these streaks in here where the flat brush will probably just blend them a little bit smoother, and I don't want that. I like these little chunks of color. Okay, there's our sky and our water. We're gonna let the sky at least dry completely, and then we'll come back and start our moon. Now we're gonna draw our moon, and I want my moon to be right about in here. So I'm gonna take my cup, and place it where I want the moon to be. And my pencil, now I'm not going to trace all the way around the moon because I want it to be a crescent. So just trace around however big you want your moon to be and at whatever angle you want. I'm gonna take my angle brush and my white paint, load up a bit. It's okay if there's a little bit of green in there because I'm gonna end up putting a little bit of green and brown on my moon so that it has some highlights and lowlights. And then dragging the tip of the brush, I'm just gonna go over that pencil line. I'm using really light pressure so I don't get too fat of a line or go outside of my pencil line. I went a little outside of my line here, so I just cleaned off my brush. And I can clean that spot up. Now I'm gonna get more white and draw the inside. And I want these parts to stay nice and pointed, so I'm not gonna make that part any whiter. And you can make this as fat or as skinny as you want in here. So I'm gonna start just right on that line. And you can push a little harder here. And just keep at this until it looks like what you want it to be. If you have to go over this part a few times to get the exact shape you the exact shape you want, that's fine. I 
and then just fill it in. I think I'm gonna take a little hint of green and a little hint of brown while I fill this in. All right, there's my moon. Now we're gonna do the fun part, which is making the tentacles. Now I know that the tentacles wrap around the moon, but we'll do that later, so don't worry about that right now. We're just gonna block in where the tentacles are gonna go. So I'm gonna use my angle brush, and there's a tiny bit of extra water in here, just so that the black paint flows nicely. So I have my black, and to start out with, I'm gonna block in the four main tentacles and I'm going to start with the one that I want reaching up toward the moon. So with my brush, the tip of the brush pointing down, I'm going to start in the corner and with super light pressure just so I get a nice thin line. I'm just going to block in a basic shape. The reason I'm not doing a fat line even though my tentacle is going to be much fatter than that is it just gives me the opportunity to be able to correct the shape if I don't like it. So I'm gonna block in a few of those, all of them going different directions, I mean, basically moving this way, but I don't want them all to be shaped the same. They can all be different lengths, everything. They can start wherever you want them to start. So I'm gonna take another one from here, like that, and one from here, and we'll make it come down like that, and one more. About like that. And now I can use heavier pressure to get these nice and fat in the shape I want. So I've got the tip of my brush pointing up because I'm gonna start up here, and I can put more pressure on them. And make them nice and fat. Now these tentacles can be just as fat or as skinny as you want them to be. If you want super chubby tentacles all the way up, then that's what you can do. If you want them really thin and graceful and swirly, you can do that too. They don't have to be exactly like mine. If you find that you have a hard time with controlling brush pressure and all of your tentacles are really fat, then don't struggle with it. Just have fatter tentacles. So I'm gonna do that same thing on all of these before we put in the other ones. Remember, if you're having a hard time getting that black to cover all the way, just get a little extra water on your brush. So if you did your homework on the Mystical Moonrise video, then you should have a pretty good idea of what it is that I'm doing here. If you didn't do that homework, then let me just show you real quick. So, super light pressure like that to draw a line. See how my brush is not bending? and I get a nice thin line. When I'm working to make the tentacles fatter, I'm gonna put full pressure, see that? And that makes a really wide line. So to go thin to fat, you just go light pressure, slowly add more pressure, until finally you have a fat line. And that's probably gonna take a little bit of practice, so just grab an extra canvas and do 
line after line after line like that until you're comfortable with it. All right, let's get four more in there. Now you can have as many tentacles as you want on your sea monster. I would advise that you have no less than eight, but you can certainly do as many as you want. Let's have another one come from right here. Just a little bit of a shorter one. And let's see, maybe one from here. Same thing, let's just fill them in and widen them out. Now the shorter it is, I think the more narrow it should be at the bottom. So I want this one to be pretty short, so I'm not gonna make it as wide at the bottom as some of the other ones. All right, now using the little round brush, let's work on getting some of these tentacles to come up and wrap around our moon. So I'm gonna get some black paint. Remember to keep your brush rolled to a point, so just roll it back and forth in the paint. And I think this one's reaching up, so I'm just gonna kind of go in the same trajectory up to the moon, stop right at the edge of it. Trace it with my eye to see where it would be going. It's maybe about right here. And I loop up, down, about like that. And then we can refine the shape afterwards. So don't worry about if it's wide enough or connecting properly. Just worry about how it's moving toward the moon right now. And then I think this one down here is gonna come up. So I'm gonna have it come up a little like that. Stop right at the moon again. Trace with my eye where that might be. Oops, not actually trace onto the moon. Just trace with my eye where that might be moving to. About there, I'm gonna have it loop up around. I think I'm gonna have this one get kind of crazy. Back around it. With my eye, it comes back to here. And about like that. Okay, now we can refine these shapes. If you happen to go over your moon a little bit with this, don't worry about it. Just let it dry and you can paint over it with white. Just like with the angle brush, the harder you push with this little round brush, the wider your line is gonna be. So really practice brush control if you're not comfortable with it. I need to clean up this line a little, so I'm going to take my clean angle brush. There we go. I'm actually going to make these little curls on the end of all of the tentacles 
but they don't all need to come up to the moon. You can have as many going up to the moon as you want to. But I'm just gonna give them all interesting little shapes on the ends. So that one is trying really hard to get up there. This one, I want it to actually be curling around. Curling around that other tentacle. What's this one doing? Let's have this one kind of reaching upward as well. I think I kind of want this one to be going off the edge. I think that's really fun and interesting. Now that you've got all of your ends to your tentacles, if you want, you can get your angle brush out and refine some of these shapes a little bit more. Whatever you want to do. Once you're completely done with the tentacles, let's let it dry because the next part we're going to be using some white and we don't want it to turn gray. All right, this is our last part. We're gonna add the little suction cups to the tentacles here. And I know we've got a bunch that are kind of crossed and it's hard to tell which one is in what position, but as we add the tentacles, you can help define which one is on top and which one is behind. So for example, right here where these two cross, if I take the sucker cups and put them up along this one and continue over top of this one, then it's gonna look like this is the closest one to you. Or I can take the sucker cups along this one up and it's gonna push this one to the back. So I'm gonna use my little round brush and white paint. And I'm not gonna put a whole lot of energy into these. I'm just gonna let them be kind of abstract-ish. So I'm gonna start here. And really all I'm doing is just kind of making a little scribbled circle. And notice it kind of comes off the edge of the tentacle a little bit. Just gives it a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna kinda of continue up here and I do want this one to be in the front. So I'm gonna keep them going over top of that one. And then maybe I want this one to seem like it's crossing in front. So I'm gonna skip some. Maybe I'll just put a little half of a one here. And that tells you that this one's in front. Now these little sucker cups don't have to go all the way along the edge. You can stop at any point. In fact, I think I'll just do a small one here. And I'm just going to taper these off. And I think I'll stop there. And on this one, I'm going to put them on the opposite side. but stopping there because this one crosses in front. And I'm gonna start tapering them off. And I think I'm actually gonna take it over top here. So go ahead and add all of these to the main parts and then we'll add a few detail ones throughout the smaller areas.
When we get to these smaller areas, you can let the break be there and then later on down, start the little spots of white again, but maybe on the other side, which will give the illusion that the tentacle is kind of twisted as it goes. So I'm going to start some more over here and on the opposite side, just little dots. And then again, taper it off and maybe I'll throw a couple here at the very end. So that's really what I'm going to do all over, taking care to put some wherever something crosses, just to make sure that I know which one is on top. But even then, you don't necessarily have to. I am going to put just a couple on here. But you don't really have to do it wherever something crosses, just if you feel like it needs it. And if you happen to do some little spots of tentacles and you don't like it, you can either wipe it off real quick with a damp brush or you can just let it dry and paint over it with black later. Whatever you want to do. These little sucker cups might be really fun in a bright color too, maybe yellow. That might look really interesting, especially with this green background. I'm not really going to put any of the cups up in the moon, on the piece of tentacle in the moon, just because I feel like it might be washed out. But if you want to put some up in there, you can definitely do that. And there's your super awesome sea monster painting. Hope you guys had a great time painting this with me and I hope you learned a few new things. Congratulations again to Stephanie Stout for naming this painting in my Facebook contest. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, feel free to share your finished paintings on my Facebook page. There's a link in the description below. You can get super creative with this painting. You can use any colors you like. If you don't have phthalo green or you don't particularly like that color, you can use any color in its place. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.